Welcome to the FA Football Forum. This podcast episode was from a series delivered back in 2020 to help support grassroots clubs and leagues. This was delivered on a webinar platform and therefore may not make too much sense unless you've got the documentation to hand, all of which is available within the description below. With this being delivered during lockdown, sometimes the audio quality may differ. Please bear that in mind. But as always, if you've got any questions or you've got any inquiries in particular to this episode or any other episode, please reach out to us by emailing clubsprogram at the So just a quick recap, um, looking at one of our first webinars on what we stand for. Um, so all of them defining as a club or as a league what your vision is, what your mission is, what your goals are. So really, really important for this topic that actually having a vision um, and a purpose allows you then to reconnect and to work out what your successes are. And hopefully they go back to what your vision is, what your purpose is. So just a recap of some of those buzzwords that we spoke about last time. So the vision is almost how you as a club or a league would like to be seen by the rest of the world, by those that sit outside of your club, but also those that sit within your club or league. And the purpose is why you exist, why you're in existence. Why do you operate as a league? What are you operating for? Same example as a club. Why are you operating? What are you operating for? What's your purpose? What do you do in your community that makes you different from the club down the road? The mission, um, really big one. How do you think you're going to get there? What measures are you going to put in place to make sure you reach your vision? Um, and the aims and goals, again, they're your milestones to help you realise um, and reach your vision mission. Those objectives, those targets, those measurables, the things that you can actually tangibly say, yes, we are working towards them. Yes, this is the way we are going to measure our steps to get to our vision, our steps to get to our end goal, our steps to achieve what we as a club or a league have set out to achieve and our values. What underpins all of that thinking, all of that vision? What underpins how you operate? What underpins how you manage situations within a club, what you are trying to embed within your community, whether that be through players, coaches, volunteers, league committee members. Um, and it's really important actually to celebrate successes. So really good topic today to look at how we define success. What does success mean? For different clubs, for different leagues, success will mean completely different things. And that's actually all okay. Um, and it's really important as well to highlight that success can be anything that you want as a club or league. And that will be underpinned by what your vision is, what your mission is, what goals you've set out. And here are just a few examples of how different leagues and clubs have defined and celebrated some of their successes. So you can see on the left hand side here, you've got quite a stats heavy based. Um, way of celebrating their success. It's a really clever way of celebrating their success for a period of time. So minutes played by the participants that have uh, joined this program, different referees that they've supported through their sponsorships and um, support mechanisms, different pathways that players have taken as a result of entering their program. The one at the top right, a, cl a club here on their website, on their website banner of put the This club, the players progressing further and beyond their club into different step levels, different clubs, is another way of defining success, another way that could be captured in programmes, that could be captured on league websites. So celebrating success is really crucial. Defining your success is even more crucial. Um, and more importantly, understanding actually that success, success can be anything you want it to be. Um, again, it's really important, and I know that will come out through um, our key presenters today. So, why measure success? 
Um, you can only really know how successful you've been um, once you actually reflect on, on where you've come from um, and almost, and more importantly, where you want to get to. Um, so that's really, really important. If you haven't and you don't know quite yet where you've come from, where you want to go to, it'll be a little bit challenging to work out what success is. But actually, once you get them objectives in place, once you get your vision in place, once you get your goals to work, help you work towards success, you have a better way of actually being able to measure that. Um, success motivates people. It helps people achieve. It helps people build a sense of togetherness, a sense of positivity. Um, and one, we all know what it's like. Once we've succeeded in something, it motivates us, pushes us on to do the next thing, to go that little bit further, to reach that little bit higher. Success and, and the reasons for, for demonstrating that has real value when you're talking to founders, when you're talking to businesses, when you're talking to sponsorships around the investment that they may make into your club. Not just for now, but in the future. If you can prove that you're successful um, in whatever you deem successful for you as your club or league, and you can demonstrate that in the right way, that has real value when you're talking to those that may want to invest in you, when you want to sponsor you financially, may want to endorse you as your club or league. It provides ongoing business support planning. Um, so actually, Having those success measures helps you know that you are achieving your business plan, whether that be one year, three year, five year, ten year. Then you can start ticking off those successes. And if you're working on short term and medium long term goals, that actually helps you get to your hopefully your bigger picture, your overarching aims of your business plan, overarching aims of your development plan, helping you steer towards that overall vision, helping you steer towards that overall success. It helps as well. Tell a story. There are so many fantastic books out there in our grassroots landscape um, and you do such amazing things. And it's actually really, really good and positive, positive and it needs to be shared bigger than just internally. I'm sure that all of your parents, all of your coaches, all of your players know what a fantastic job you do. But actually, it's really important to share that um, beyond those that already know what you do um, and again I've mentioned it right at the beginning but above all it shows that you're meeting your vision and your purpose uh, and hopefully that's the reason that you're in existence um, and if you keep working towards that that will always be your guiding light and your shining star as to those hard decisions that you need to be made um, those business plans you might need to rein in all around making sure that you're towards your vision and purpose I think it's, you jump in. Yes, thanks, Danielle. Um, yeah, so um, if we're getting to start talking about uh, how to measure success, um, kind of in simple terms, think about it as quantity, uh, as numbers, and, and quality. Um, and as Danielle showed on some of the earlier slides there, um, you could already see, you know, I think typically a lot of a lot of people would look at um, quantity probably more more often than not because it's easier to just count numbers. Anyone who's um, pulled together or prepared a funding application often immediately um, the attention is drawn to how many how many of this, how many of that, you know, how many new people playing or uh, how many um, hours doing this or that. So it's you know it, it's it's quite nice to have numbers and easy to track. Um, a, a change over time. Um, so, you know, types of things we look at, say number of members, number of players, um, then financially, when we've got numbers to play with, so, you know, levels of income, uh, whether the business is growing or not, um, number of coaching qualifications, um, and, and other skilled volunteers. So, and of course, you know, uh, we've got a league table that's got numbers, um, which immediately tells you um, whether they're succeeding or not. But I think alongside that, um, it's really good to try and get a mix of, of really um, quantity and quality. So thinking about um, qualitative, really about says the quality. So um, 
what different things could you potentially measure? So things like um, satisfaction. Would you recommend this uh, volunteering for this club to a friend? Or um, what's becoming more and more apparent is, um, is you know the, the importance of well-being. Um, how people, you know, so it's more often about feelings. Um, and um, again, you know, it, it, it's nice to mix up some quantifiable numbers with, with some feelings, telling the story of success in a slightly different way. So, um, yeah, broadly speaking, you can fit them into two categories. Um, if I go on to the next slide, there's all kinds of ways that obviously the, the, that you can help um, measure um, both. So, most people will be familiar with uh, uh, the online tools like SurveyMonkey, uh, which in itself, anyone who's kind of used online survey tools over, over time will see how the questions are getting uh, more and more clever. Um, so there's ways to uh, interpret and almost objectify uh, what are really qualitative responses. So. Uh, it just makes the data easier to interpret and then um, use and, and, and promote and track over time. There's some interesting online tools as well, um, you know, particularly around impacts, social impacts. So there's um, something that I've seen with Big Society Capital, uh, an impact matrix, which is quite nice, which helps to break down a project. Um, of course, there's uh, numerous tools now with things like uh, around financial performance so um, most financial um, packages like sage and other things will immediately uh, be able to turn things into graphs if that's what you want um, so again you know people respond in different ways some people dive straight for the numbers some people want the words so uh, you know if you're describing the success of a club, it, it's important to appeal to both audiences and, and anyone who perhaps an accountant when they're thinking about the success of a club might immediately be drawn to, okay, well, what, what's the turnover, or what's the growth, whereas other people um, perhaps are looking for other things. Um, participation, activity, um, you know, these are the sort of things that quite a lot of clubs will be tracking anyway. Um, even if it's not necessarily to, to promote success, so it might be something that you need to report um, back, or even just a case of collecting, collecting subs. This data should be there, so then it's thinking about how you might use it. Um, in terms of kind of more qualitative um, ways to get information, focus groups are, are fantastic. You know, not not just to to track success, but just to get feedback and, and, and get under the skin of some of the issues um, that are bad about a club. So it's, it's just finding that time uh, with a small group of people where you can sit down in an open-minded way, you know, in a trusted way, and, and talk about uh, the club and how it's, how it's going. And actually, you know, often some of the best uh, ways to promote success for a club is, is some of the the comments that come come out of those focus groups where it really touches on perhaps a, an individual emotional story about how it's affected someone's life or um, perhaps, I don't know, the confidence of someone's child has really grown by virtue of, of the impact that you've had of um, them being involved at the club. So you can really get into some of the issues. And also you can take um, perhaps some of the data that you've already captured into those focus groups and try and unpick it to really uh, you know, understand um, a bit more of the feeling behind the numbers. One-to-one -one interviews is, is, is a good way to actually um, be more specific and niche. So sometimes it doesn't always suit to have a focus group if people are sat there with completely different interests and, and, and a take. So for example, um, you know, a one-to-one -one interview where you've got people uh, different parts of the club, perhaps coaches, spectators, parents, you know, you try and group them together on the focus group or tease out perhaps a one-to-one -one interview. Um, but yeah, there's other more creative ways as well. So, you know, what's becoming more and more popular and I think uh, we'll 
we'll see that shortly with with Wayne and Hype is is the use of um, media, short films, other ways to um, and social media to, to get some instant um, responses to capture feedback and, and, and share successes. So lots of different ways and so many different apps and technology uh, that, that can help now. So uh, be creative. Slightly more um, sort of technical slide, really. When you um, kind of think about, okay, so um, finding success is, you know, actually kind of how you get there, and, and working backwards and start turn into a, into a plan or a project plan. Um, you know, the, the it can become a really useful planning tool. So. The way I'd start is is to start right on the far side of the outcomes. So, um, what are the types of things that you, you know, what would you define success as? Um, what are you looking to achieve? Um, so it might be uh, perhaps um, more uh, girls playing football, or it might be to create the, the most engaged, passionate volunteer workforce. Um, you start on that, that right hand side and then you just work your way backwards um, through the outputs, activities and inputs. So, you know, to have a um, fantastic, engaged um, volunteer workforce, um, you start to think about, okay, so, you know, what, what are the outputs there or is there some training that we need to do? Are there other materials um, that we might need? Um, that, that help them feel comfortable, uh, you know, and, and trusted and empowered in the roles that they do. Um, looking back through to the activities, um, you know, are, are there um, uh, focus groups or interventions that we could make around understanding the role of volunteering at a club, um, and uh, you know, which will lead to the outputs and ultimately the outcomes, and then back right at the start. Of the input, so what what do you need to, to put into this? Is it some money into the training courses? Do you need some some mentoring? Do you need to go and visit another club who've got a great program going? Um, so it's just a it's just a way to kind of start to piece together um, from the best bit really, which is what you're trying to achieve, a little plan of action. Um, and if you'd go on to the next slide. And, uh, for, for those uh, real enthusiasts out there, there's a whole host of extra uh, kind of more technical um, tools and models which can help um, think about measurement and evaluation. And we're going to cover in future webinars a bit more around um, planning a good project. But here's, here's just a few things which which might appear again, you know, there's lots of free stuff online. So um, there's these kind of like nice canvases, which you can, which is not a bad place to start working up a project um, from. So that's on the left where it breaks it down into various components. As I was saying before, you know, what's the success factor, but what's you know, what the aim. So it just allows you perhaps as a small group to work through, um, you know, the whole, um, a bit more of a plan, really. So you've got um, it all bulleted and broken down. Sport England have got uh, a useful tool, which is outcomes hierarchy, which, um, you know, again, it's, it's fairly similar. You, you, you start with the primary outcome, what you're looking to achieve. So as a club, again, it could be, you know, it could be an on-pitch thing, um, or it could be, um, you know, something more to do with uh, perhaps the culture and environment at the club. Um, and, you know, so you start off with what your primary outcome is, um, and then you can, you know, you work backwards and, and have secondary outcomes, things that um, you know, when you break, break it down, also come about. So maybe, um, uh, you know, if you're looking to, you know, win the league, Actually, secondary outcome is that you 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 improve your coaching network or you know other things which will help to build up to, to the ultimate goal. And then at the bottom, which 
which is which is the important thing really is which goes back to the slides before is what what the indicators so how do you know um, in a quantifiable way that you've achieved success and the final it looks like the uh, flight of a dart arrow uh, in there uh, it's just a little image which um, uh, it probably goes a bit too far for, for most but um, I quite like it in in terms of um, lots of lots of things have um, hopefully intended consequences but sometimes there's positive unintended um, consequences and sometimes unfortunately negative unintended consequences so, you know, it's, it's always worth thinking about when you've got um, a goal in mind what other things um, going on there's all sorts of ways to look at this so for example um, if you want to get new floodlights let's say for your, um, for your pitch, you know, there might be, in a wider scheme of things, actually uh, uh, perhaps the unintended, well, it could be either positive or negative, where perhaps the, uh, the floodlights in the park actually make the park a safer, um, uh, more secure place to be at night. Um, or perhaps an unintended consequence might be that it upsets the local residents who aren't happy with the club and, and creates further tensions. So, um, but for those people that are perhaps doing a big, bigger project, perhaps um, going for maybe for significant funding, it's worth just looking at uh, things like um, social return on investment and some of the little um, uh, ways to plan through a project just to see, yeah, actually, you know, you might be writing one thing down in your um, proposal that you want to achieve, but actually the real benefit is elsewhere, or perhaps the unintended consequence um, of, of you doing that creates a problem elsewhere. So maybe you know, it could be as simple as um, the demand for a new pitch uh, creates a problem in another one of your facilities. So you know, this, is, this is kind of going a little bit step, a bit, a bit step bit of a step further but it's um, useful to just think about you know, step back and evaluate um, success and what you're aiming for and then um, yeah I think this slide will probably be best um, presented really through um, some of the case studies because they really do um, shout out Daniel's mentioned already but um, you know, it's really thinking about obviously celebrating success, particularly if you've now got some some really useful data, um, and thinking about how you know when the audience, as I said before, respond to different data. So um, you know, some people might like a little snappy in infographic that sits in social media. Other people might like a detailed report or presentation. Um, you know, maybe perhaps a, um, a, a parent or an investor or, 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 or someone, or, or maybe, you know, there's a volunteer who wants to see that uh, kind of feel good factor with a nice uh, pen portrait of someone who's got involved in the club and, you know, and, and is passionately talking about how it's changed, changed them for the better. So, yeah, definitely celebrate success. Think about, um, yeah, if you can regularly build it into your calendar, then that's great because then people expect it. The obvious thing would be, you know, around things like um, an AGM or, or um, um, you know, an annual get together that you have, awards night. But yeah, it's nice because then people, you know, it, it becomes a routine and, and an expectation that there'll be a celebration. Um, and as I say, there's a variety of different ways to do it. Um, and, and I think where you can try and cater for all the different audiences, um, because you know each each one will have their own take. Some people will want the detail, um, perhaps, you know, a funder or an investor, or um, someone else might want the um, more of a kind of quality feeling. 
feeling about, you know, will I go and volunteer? Will I take my son or daughter to play at this club? Do I want to invest time in this place? Does the culture feel right? So um, try where you can to appeal to all the different audiences. Stuff. Thanks, James. Um, insightful. Lots of uh, lots of colourful infographics from yourself there as well. So thank you very much for that, um, guys. I am going to introduce you to Wayne. Um, Wayne is from Hive and Dibden Youth Football Club, um, and Wayne has joined us this evening to talk about um, the club's successes, what it means for the club, how they've worked out their club successes. Um, but Wayne, before we start, shall I show the guys the uh, the video? Yeah, yeah, it's a great place to start. Thank you. Great stuff. Really cool video, guys, just to kick start off um, and the introduction to Hive and Dibden. Fantastic video. I uh, love the, uh, the keeper at the end that uh, was uh, doing a little basketball take there with uh, lots of bounces of the, of the ball there, so that was great. Wayne, I will get this back into position for you where you can kick start off. Thank you, Daniel, and thanks, James. It was really insightful. Um, okay, so when we got asked to do this, um, I think we kind of had to ask ourselves uh, a few questions. Um, Kind of felt publicly and within the community that we were successful at what we were doing, but we, you know, we needed to understand why. Um, the question was, have we made it, or is our club a success, and, and have we made it? So, before we could sort of understand if we were successful, we needed to understand what, or who we are and, and what we did. I think that's why we played the video, it, it sort of in that two minute clip um, sort of encapsulates what we're about. Um, and what we're trying to do. And then from there, we're able to sort of piece the pieces together, um, you know, moving forward to, to be a success. So, okay, so we sort of identified that there was four key groups that, that make up our club. So we had the coaches, the, the, the parents, the committee members, and then most importantly, the, the, the children, the players. So, so we, we sort of, as a leadership group and as a committee, when we got together and discussed what, what and why we were successful, um, we decided to, to sort of go out to these people. Um, we went out to the coaches and we asked them, I, I won't go through them all individually, but that sort of gives you a snapshot of, of what came back from, from our coaches. We've got 62 coaches, I think, now in the football club. Um, they're quite a large base. Um, so, but actually, the, a lot of the answers were quite similar. Um, I'll just pick out a few there. So, Education and learning opportunities is a really big one. So, so as a club, we try and do lots of CPDs and, and give the, the coaches the best resources we can. So it's great to see that that was coming back as sort of what a coach sees as success, because ultimately, in order for them to sort of deliver on the pitch, they, they want to know, you know, and they want to be the best. So, you know, having the opportunity to sort of educate themselves further 
um, was a really important one. Um, go on to the next one as well. Something I, I think is, is sort of sometimes, say, overlooked, but, but a, a group that, that really need to feel a part of the club as well, which is the parents. So, again, we went out to the parents through, through sort of WhatsApp groups for individual age groups um, and emails as well. Um, these are some of the things we got back. And this was actually the, the one that, um, you know, was, was, was really pleasing as well. Sometimes within, certainly within coaching, if you ask any coaching, it sometimes can be quite a lonely place to be. It dropped off and it, the, there's minimal contact with parents. So actually when we started delving in and, and sort of feeling below the layers of, of what the parents feel about, about the club, um, some of the feedback was, was really positive. And again, it all sort of, into you know, further in the in this in the presentation about being successful um, most important slide will be the next one and why we will do it um, which is which is the children um, and, and you know they are children they're children first and players second um, and, and we try and put them on the fun safe place to play football and learn and become better footballers and better people um, giving them lots of praise by rewarding them and allowing them to learn both football skills and life skills. These again were some of, again, from under sevens all the way through to under 18s, answers that, that came back from, from the children and the players. So um, again, leading into one of our four key groups of, of the ingredients of, of what and why we're successful. Um, lastly, it was a committee. So it underpins any great club. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be the, the, the chairman of the football club, but not naive enough to realise that it's the team that's around me that, that enables us to be successful. So I've, I've got a fantastic team. Um, again, we reached out and we asked each and every one of them. Um, these, were, these were sort of the key ones that came back and, and actually underpin what we're doing as a club. Um, yeah, and I won't, I won't go through them all, but, you know, we talk about successful health checks so to maintain a level of charter standard we need to have annual health checks um, on the spot checks a lot county FAs now are doing um, spot checks with coaches um, so making sure that we're getting good returns in them as well a lot of county leagues or leagues within the county now are doing um, respect marks after every game so again we came out Above the average in um, in those spot checks as well, so so that was really important as well to make sure that the good work going on is is actually transferring right down onto the pitch with the coaches. Um, another important one there was a future proofing. So you know, one has a cycle within grassroots football, and I'm no different to that. And the committee that I sit with are no different to that. Um, a big part of, of what we're trying to do is make sure that it's when. And our time's done with the club and, and we, we move on into to different things and we leave the club in, in what will be great hands is to make sure that they've got the platform to, to sort of continue the great work. Um, and again, we'll move on to that later on of, of how we can sort of recognise success in, in that department as well. We just go on to, to the next one. Um, so here we go. So what does success look like for our, our club? So, so with those four groups and the four ingredients that we had there, um, we needed a, a, a guiding light and a blueprint to, to be able to underpin what we are moving forward. Um, we then, once we were confident in what we had there, we then sort of gave that confidence and tried to instill it into, into our coaches. Um, from there, they ran with it. They were on board and um, they were able to work the magic. So um, this is what it looks like. Everything that we talked about before, there's our recipe for success. Happy parents or, or, or happy coaches, happy parents, happy committee. And ultimately, we're creating an environment to have happy children, which is why we're doing it. So with them four things together, the last thing we needed or the, to, to complete it all was was a North Star, something to point it at. Um, and something actually that we stole a little bit from, from a local club. So um, Saints or Southampton FC were local to us. They have a thing called We March On and, and you know they sort of celebrate any success they have with, with that mantra. Um, and we kind of recognised that you know, we, we could do some of that as well. So, so we took on the, uh, we all can play. So um, 
it's a hashtag and for on Twitter, we sort of attach it to everything we do and it is our it is our North Star. Everything we do as a club now, be it small or be it quite you know, in terms of committee, everything points back to, to that. And basically all that means is um, we're a club that accepts everybody. Uh, everybody and everyone. So if you're an elite player or if you have never kicked a ball before and just want to be social, then we will find a place for you to play. Um, uh, everyone will be given equal opportunity and everyone ultimately will be given the environment, the correct environment to, to learn and have fun and hopefully fall in love with the game. Um, we appreciate that every player that we sort of comes through the club is is maybe not going to go on and become a professional footballer, but actually as a club, we've got a duty to them to make sure they, they fall in love with the game and they carry on playing. If they're going to be coaches, can we inspire them to be coaches? Is that a success? I think so. Um, are they going to be referees? Ultimately, the future's in our hands, so, so we have to protect that. And, and by having a, a mantra and something that we can sort of fall back on, it, it, it really does underpin everything we do. Um, so with that, um, the last thing and, and the thing that we based it all around was was the environment. We understood and, and sort of as a, as a leadership group, we've done a lot of research and spoke to a lot of parents who were teachers. Um, you know, I can't, I can't thank the, them people enough. That there's, there's a lot of people in, in any club that can help you. And, and in this, trying to get the environment right was key. So. We looked at school and we looked at different learning environments and, and actually come up with the idea that if we got the environment right and we had the platform to, to be able to move on um, and ultimately give us success. So by the environment, um, we need the teams, an age group if you like. So we're quite a large club. We have 32 teams within the club across a variety of age groups. So the first thing we did was we sort of combined the age groups together. Um, so the teams in the age group still remained as, as teams, but we kind of tried to break down a, a few of those boundaries within the team. So some of my roles within the FA, I get to go around. And sometimes what you can see is almost franchises within a club. So they're a little bit detached. Um, sometimes the, the core values are not the same. You could be on a pitch where maybe the, the the guys that the children are playing or training for the same team, they're wearing the same kit, actually the values are not the same. Um, so so we, we tried to sort of get in there and, and, and address that. So we try and encourage um, social interactions between the children, between the age groups. So having an understanding that yet some children need training um, at that level and some need it at this level. Actually, they're all children and during the day on the playground, they play with each other and you know, on the playground, they play football with each other, they play sports at school, and that's all they want to do when they come to us. So we offer that environment as well. Um, it also sort of helps us in terms of environment, in terms of the ability. So um, soft tiering that we have within the club. So making sure that every child is playing in an environment that is, is matching their ability, if you like. So a new child coming into the club will be put in an environment where they're going to learn and they're going to have fun um, and ultimately want to continue playing football. Um, so yeah, when um, once we got the environment right, we were able then to sort of march on. Um, and again, with the sort of mantra of we all can play along with the, the correct environment, we, we firmly believe we had all the ingredients to, um, to deliver the very best. And, and I'm going to just go for a, a a few sort of examples in a minute um, of, of what that looks like. Um, so there you go, that sort of just underpins a little bit of what I said about with the foundation set, a clear vision. Um, it's important here actually just to go back to, to the last um, webinar with, with Stuart. Although the, the subjects that we're talking about are different, uh, the one thing that was apparent with Stuart and his club was that they knew what they were and they knew what, you know, they know what they do. Um, and, and that's the stage where we got to. We, we, we had an understanding of, of who we were and what we wanted to do. And then from there, we sort of set out on our pursuit of success. Let's go on to the next one. We're going to start dropping into a few examples. So um, two and a half years ago, 2017, um, as a 
as a leadership group, we understood that girls' football was was thriving. It was it was really big, um, and we had you know as much as sort of recognizing success. Sometimes you've got to be able to recognize sort of your underachievements as well. Um, and we did that. We sat down and we, we realized that we hadn't quite got that right. 2017, we only had one girl signed to the football club. Um, that was our vice chairman's daughter, um, very resilient young lady, still playing now. Um, but she was playing in, a, in an all boys team um, and that was okay for her. And what we we're finding is that we were, we were getting girls into the football club, wasn't able to sort of retain them. And, and that goes back to sort of the previous conversations we've been having about environment. We ascertained that we wasn't able to provide the girls with the right environment. So going back to everything that we'd learned, we, we decided to change it. And again, in 2017, it sort of became our, our primary focus. Um, so um, what we did is we, first of all, we set out with a lot of help from, so we're very fortunate in the county. There's a lady called Flo who works for Hampshire FA um, and she's fantastic. She, she really helped myself and, and the club on sort of our pursuit for within the girls game um, lots of pointers lots of ideas um, and we're able to, to start offering girls the right environment to come and play so we, during the FA's women and girls week we set up a we set up a day and we invited lots of girls in um, female coaches as well um, just to come in and have fun and fall in fall in love with the game um, on that day we got 12 girls they came in they had fun um, and then from there we, we spoke to, so at the time, it was a lady called Lois Fiddler who was, um, who was involved within Southampton FC women and, women's and Girls and Martina. Um, and they were doing some great work locally. So we spoke to them as well. And they were brilliant. They came in and they helped and, and they, they put on sessions and CPDs. Um, and from that, we were able to get some female coaches, which was the first, first time we'd had that within the club. So we were able to get them through on their level ones. Um, so then, and then we started to see the growth of it. Um, now, up until now, I think we're up to you know, two and a half years on, we're up to 60 girls now across various teams. We've got a Lioness session that's set up on a, on a weekday night that, that's brilliant, that, that's the environment for our, our youngest girls to come in. Um, the hope that they're going to go and form a new team at under sevens. Um, yeah, and that, that sort of, to us as a club, that's what success looks like. Um, you know, we, we were big enough to recognise that we'd, we'd maybe not been so successful in an area. We understood why, we talked about it, and we set out on the pursuit. And, and that's an example, really, of actually a bit of a long-term project. That, that's two and a half years from, from then until now, and, and it's by no means over. So, you know, we're talking about that's going to continue. That, that success that we've got to now is, is only temporary, and, and it will grow, and it will get, it will get better, bigger. Uh, Again, like what James was saying, it's not just about quantity, it's, it's about quality as well. So we've got to ensure that, that when these girls come in, we're, we're able to provide the right opportunity. Um, that's sort of a, a, a bit based around what the club's long term or, or a piece of success from, from the long term. Um, this here was, was really inspiring. Um, something we put out on social media as well. And, I was really glad that sort of James spoke about this in, in his piece as well, which was um, what the success looked like for, for maybe individuals as well. So, so Millie is a, a lovely young lady who um, had, had a few issues with confidence. Um, she, would, she would go to school, but she would really struggle to integrate socially, um, certainly not with any clubs. You know, parents had tried the usual, um, usual clubs and she came down to one of our sessions with a coach who we're going to speak about in a minute who, who egged her on and, and got her in to, to do a couple of minutes which she did she came in and she, she did a couple of minutes played some fun games and that was enough for her at that time and, and she went back out the gate next week she came back and she did a few minutes more um and it's gradually grew and grew and grew the support in the right environment to the point where about six weeks of coming and going and dipping her toe, she, she actually played her first game, first ever game of football, which was great. And, and you know, everyone encouraged her and it was brilliant. And, and the 
coach, we have a WhatsApp group that celebrates success on a weekly basis. So what challenges uh, the players were set. And um, so Ian came back and, and put his post up about Millie and it actually included this picture, which Millie herself had done. Um, so to, to some, it's, it's just a picture, but actually to, to her parents and to the club who understood where Millie was, um, really, really inspiring. And, and to us, that you know, what we were going back to the video about we all can play, that I think in itself sort of sums up everything that we're trying to do. Millie's still playing football to this day, still struggles with her, with her own sort of confident issues, except when she's playing football. So, um, so we can all be tremendously proud in, in sort of the part we've played to, to give Millie a platform in her life rather than just as a footballer. So, um, so yeah, that's, that was a really key part that we wanted to share just for tonight and, and sort of the power that, that football and, and volunteers within football can have. Um, if we just go on to the, to the next one. So, <laughs> Rom is actually a really good friend of mine. Um, in terms of what we were talking about at the start with the four ingredients. So, so we had a bit of, uh, we talked about the, the parents, the coaches, the players and the committee talked a little bit about club success before with the girls and an individual one in terms of a player with Millie. Um, this is this is from a coach and, and maybe and I'm not sure if Romans is really expecting this, but actually a bit of a, a bit of um, a bit of praise to, to Ian tonight as well for, for what he's done. I'm not going to go through all the points there, but in terms of celebrating a coach's success, um, coached our, what are now our under 16 boys teams. He also coaches our under 12 girls teams. Um, so one team plays on a Saturday, one team plays on a Sunday, one team trains on a Monday, one trains on a Wednesday. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure his wife likes us that much, but he um, he's just one of, one of our heroes, if you like. But interestingly with Ian is, um, Three or four years ago, he's ready to just chuck it all in. He, he had a tough time before the girls' section came along, he, and he was doing just the boys' section. Um, there was a bit of turmoil within the age group. Um, it wasn't it wasn't all rosy. Um, had the same problems that I'm sure a lot of the people that are watching this have had during their time. Um, I didn't quite feel like at that time he was getting support from the football club. So myself and other members of the club and and previous chairman at the time as well, also did a great job, spoke to Ian and um, shared our, our sort of new vision with him and, and the blueprint and, and got Ian back on board. Um, and slowly but surely, he, um, he was able to sort of start enjoying it again for himself. He recently done his level two, which inspired him to, to sort of, you know, to be the best he can be. And then the girls section kicked off. Um, Ian's actually got two twins that, that play in the girls. They're just there in the picture, actually. Um, so Ian took the girls on as well, and and now he hasn't got back. And again, just uh, you know, if there's people watching the, the webinar that are part of club committees, you know, it's important to recognise these people. The, the the sort of heartbeat in every club. There's a heartbeat. There's a there's a hero. There's someone that sort of encapsulates everything you do and and I guess tonight and it's not the first time that we've we've said it about Ian um he's recognizing these people as well recognizing not only club successes big successes little successes um but actually individual successes I think it's really important so um yeah just uh, that's really important for us as well, as well. Um, let me go on to the next one again this was so in terms of success I never really thought about this as as, um, as a, a massive success story, but actually, after talking and, and listening to to a lot of what was coming back, the director of New Forest Care is our whole club sponsor. He's a parent within the club that simply took his child to football, dropped them off, and picked them up again after. But quickly recognised sort of everything that we were doing, um, and together with his business partners, decided to become a whole club sponsor. So again, 30 odd teams, we've now got our kits are all branded, everyone's in the same kit with the same sponsor. Um, and you know, in terms of celebrating success, I think that sort of that speaks volumes as well. So um, yeah, big thanks to New Forest K. Everything we do is, is great. So yeah, 
a, a good success story there. Um, again, going back, Daniel made a, a perfect point. How how do we share that? We've got a brand new website. Um, we encourage that through social media, people to interact. We, we put everything that we possibly can up there, apart from results. We're not a results-based club. Um, recently had a new logo. Um, yeah, we, we were happy to promote that as well through, through these sources and different things. So, yeah, social media and website play a huge part in everything we do. So uh, yeah, we'll continue to sort of explore that as well, something that's relatively new to us. So, uh, yeah, that's that's something that a big player recently for us. Um, coming to the... Okay, so got a last few slides now. So the Jane Hurling Award, this, again, it's recognising individualism within the club. The Jane was um, an old committee member of ours that, that left about five or six years ago, um, and we named an award after Jane, and basically the award... It's for people that are sort of not just long service, but, but more so people that go above and beyond. So um, that gets presented, uh, presented once a year at our, at our annual presentation. Um, something that, that's sort of important to the club, again, to recognise these individuals that sort of are the heartbeat of, of football clubs. So, yeah, just a little touch on that, again, about recognising success. Um, on to the next one. OK, so the biggest one for us... Um, you know, in terms of celebrating success, to be told or, or be awarded as being the, the sort of club of the year, the grassroots football club of the year by Hampshire FA last year, um, for us was was absolutely huge. And, and we sung from the rooftops about it, and, and I'm rightly so, I think. Um, sort of, you know, sometimes we believe that we're doing a good job, or all the time we believe we're doing a good job, but sometimes it's nice to be told as well. Um, so a bit like how we sort of try and tell our volunteers and, and showcase them um, to actually be recognised by by our peers as, as as doing a great job was was brilliant. So um, something that yeah we'll we'll remember for a long long time. Um, we go okay and go to the next one, Daniel. So future success, again, football's never standing still, so we have to keep moving. Uh, Charter Standard Community Club, at the moment we're a development club. We've got a few sort of T's to cross and I's to dot before we can apply for our community club, um, but we hope by the end of the year we can we can go and do that. So, um, yeah, looking forward to, to getting the application off for that. Again, it's important to have sort of a, a vision to, to want to improve. And lastly, just securing the future of the club's facilities. Um, we're fortunate enough to be a partner club at a fantastic 3G facility down here in the New Forest. Um, we, we don't have the sort of the backup facilities, changing rooms, toilets or, or refreshment area. So we're currently in a, a big fundraising stage um, and we hope that so I'm obviously we're in a bit of a tricky time at the moment, so timescales might have to shift a little bit, but we're hoping by... Uh, by the back of the summer that these things will be put in place and again it will go go a long way into sort of sharing how successful and, and sort of where we were to where we are now so yeah okay. and just to conclude really what we're saying so while success is an end there is no end to, to what we're doing so we're constantly evaluating what where our targets are and, and what we want to do and what we want to be uh, that won't change um, I think the most important one here, particularly for people watching, is you can't please all the people all the time. Um, you know, the whole presentation might have come across like everything's rosy within our club and we don't have any problems and we don't get any problem emails or problems with parents and stuff. We do. Um, we do. But actually, it's a sign of a good club is, is, is the processes that you've got in place to be able to deal with that. Um, but more importantly, having a vision and set of values that, that sort of point back to, to everything you do. Um, if you've got that, then you can deal with these problems a lot more efficiently. So, so don't be alarmed by um, problems, especially if you're a club that have, haven't got a vision or a blueprint or a shining light yet. You come up with those ideas and they're challenged. That's fine. That's okay. But if you're strong as a, as a leadership group to, to be able to back them up then, then that's the most important thing um, and then lastly I guess it's why we all do it if we're keeping the parents and players and the coaches happy 
then, then we, we deem ourselves as, as a success. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks very much for the, about our football club. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you very much for that. That is much appreciated. Um, really insightful. Uh, I think it was really important that um, when we were talking about success, and, and this wasn't at all teed up, um, I, I emailed uh, many county affairs and said, look, if you've got some really good clubs, really good practice out there around this topic, please do let me know. And uh, Hampshire came back and, and, and recommended Wayne, which was fantastic. Um, and I always had in the back of my head uh, when pulling the content together with James that it would always look at um, maybe something different that isn't necessarily a facility project, for example, or it isn't necessarily um, a um, big funding um, bid, for example, that success could be. Um, in any way, shape or form that you, as a club, as a committee, um, deemed appropriate. Um, so I was always really keen for that. And it just so happened that when Hampshire FA, Charlotte over there recommended Wayne, that it, it worked out um, well. Uh, and I think, like I say, it wasn't the fact that we wanted to tee it up. It was more the fact that success can be anything. And I think sometimes we um, overcomplicate it. Um, I think one question that did come through the chat, which I think is really good from Andrew, is just around some of the assets um, and infographics that have been shared today look really cool. Um, is there any kind of almost free tools out there? Um, and I know James has come back on some of them. But just to go back to, to Wayne's presentation, and I'm sure Wayne won't mind me saying, is that um, Wayne's good with computers, but not necessarily the design that you saw on the presentation. And actually, it was someone within Wayne's club that pulled that together. So I'd just say that if you do want to pull together some cool snazzy snaps, uh, uh, stats, infographics, etc., have a look as well within your club. There might be an individual that works for a company or has their own company that might be able to do that for you. Um, I do appreciate that it is six minutes past and we are over. I just wanted to, to summarise the last two slides. Um, what I will say is that uh, once I've summarised them, questions will be at the end if people want to stay. James, Wayne, I hope that's OK if we stay on the line for another kind of five to ten just to be um, available if anyone does want to answer any questions. Just wanted to, to give this last slide um, some time. Karen gave me her time last week, which was fantastic. And she ultimately spoke around what one of the successes for her league is. And ultimately, and again, it wasn't planned. It just reiterated everything that Wayne had said, everything that um, James had kind of pulled together in terms of content and guidance. And ultimately for this league, um, one of their successes really is to be able to provide uh, and continue to provide a safe support of an enjoyable opportunity to play football. And four key things really for... Um, for Karen and, and the team there at, at the Norfolk Combined Youth League was linking your success to your vision. And I think Wayne hit the nail um, on the head there, really, when he spoke around um, his vision as a club and actually the happy coaches, happy committee, happy parents equals happy players um, was really, really important. Uh, again, Wayne um, Wayne mentioned around uh, leagues looking at the respect marks, and, and this is one way that the league here uses data to support conversation. Um, ultimately, they're looking to provide a safe support of an enjoyable environment and then respect figures and marks that are inputted into the league helps begin that conversation. Um, yes, it helps maybe more challenging conversations when um, things maybe aren't being played in right way both on and off the pitch but it's another way to gather that information and then start working out how you can work towards your success um when speaking to karen she was really keen that um that actually everyone's on board with with helping to 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 reach their successes or their aims their objectives their vision and again i think wayne really hit the nail on the head there when he encompassed the parents, the co committee, the coaches, the players in, in understanding what success means for them and, and what the club means to them. Um, and again, last point there from Karen really is around kind of connect and share the knowledge. It's no good um, knowing you're successful or thinking you're successful and not being able to share it. Um, it's really, really important, especially in the current times. Um, I know it's a, a real challenge and um, 
I was challenged as to whether I should continue running this webinar based on the current situations we find ourselves in. And I was adamant to do so for the simple fact is that, yes, it's been a really tough um, season for, for many. Um, and if anything, it's, it's exceptionally tough now. However, you guys do absolutely fantastic things out there. You really do. Um, and wrongly or rightly, the situation we find ourselves in now hopefully gives you and your committee an opportunity to reflect on what you've done, not just this season, but but seasons prior um, and actually really hone in on, on why you are successful and what you do really well, because you do. Football just runs continuously. We don't ever get a break. And this might get an uh, might be an opportunity for you guys to really reflect and, and understand why you're successful, because you are all successful in your own ways. You might just not know yet why you are, um, but I promise you, you all are. Um, like I say, I apologise, 10 minutes over, um, I do appreciate those that have stayed on the line, um, it is one of the, the notes I've jotted down for those that were on the first one and are now on this one, it is a, it is a reoccurrence that we're over, so I'm looking at, at how we kind of make sure we're on time and or extend the time. Apart from that, um, like I say, James and myself 100% will stay on the line, I hope Wayne will as well, um, to answer any questions, any further questions you may have. Apart from that, everyone. Stay safe, please. Thank you very much for joining. Um, and hopefully we'll see you all on the next webinar with details to follow in due course. Thank you very much, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to the FA Football Forum. If you like this episode and you want any more information, please visit thefa.com forward slash clubs and leagues or email clubsprogram at thefa.com. If you want a monthly dose of this content, be sure to search the Grassroots Football Hub on YouTube or find In The Box on your favourite podcast provider. This is the podcast supporting grassroots clubs and leagues be the best places to play and enjoy the game.